Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna be talking about IT band syndrome. Specifically, when you feel like you've tried everything you possibly can to resolve it and still haven't found a solution. We might just have a solution for you. So pay attention here. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about IT band syndrome especially if you feel like you've tried everything that you've possibly seen out there to resolve it. And this is a very specific situation that we need to really preface well here in the first place. So first of all, I wanna make sure that you've really checked all, covered all the bases that you should have prior to even really worrying or considering about what we're gonna be getting into today. And that's, the first two major things that need to be addressed in trying to resolve any IT band syndrome. What's going on at your feet and what's going on at your hips. And I've already made a video about IT band syndrome and why stretching won't work necessarily. And I'll put that right here for you guys so that you can check that out. It'll go a little bit more into depth about how that works and what's driving it from the ground up. But your feet and your hips are two major players in the overall structure and stability of your legs, which if those are not functioning well, can be driving your IT band syndrome. And they might just be what's going on. A lot of times people forget to look at what their base is doing at their feet, if it has stability, if it has the mobility that it should. And that's a simple driver right from the ground up that's completely affecting overall how their leg is functioning. So we do wanna make sure that you check those boxes and cover those bases to truly say, oh, well, maybe this is something worth considering, okay? So with that said, today we're gonna to be specifically talking about in the case that maybe you've had a previous lower back or spinal injury, okay, or there's one that's underlying that you are not aware of just yet. And this is miss it. The idea that a herniated disc or some form of impingement of a nerve at the L4, L5, or L5, S1 range can be chronically causing tension in those muscles that surround the IT band is very important to understand. We think that the IT band is problematic because there's tension around it and we have to address those muscles. So what do we end up doing? We smash them, we stretch them, which is normally gonna be okay, but if there is a driving factor and it feels like you've been trying these things for some time now and you're not able to see any relief where there's still that chronic tension, then you may want to consider if you've had a spinal injury in the past or looking into the fact that maybe you do have spinal compression or some form of nerve impingement that is causing those tissues to be chronically locked up from that impingement. And this is not something that you have to go out and necessarily worry about doing imagery right away or going out and necessarily worrying about having anything like surgery. This is simply an awareness thing here. So we want you to know that that can be driving muscular tension. Similarly, it could be causing a sciatic issue or a piriformis issue as well. These are all symptoms of a greater root cause and that's what we need to see through the whole bigger picture too. If there is something blocking that nerve root, then that can be causing tension at the quadriceps, at the glutes, and at those hamstrings on that IT band, chronically causing you to have an issue or a feeling that you have no relief from any of the modalities that you've already tried. Okay? Now with that said, I'm going to give you a few exercises today as well that you might find helpful in 
trying to address something that would be in your lumbar spine that might be causing this IT band syndrome, okay? Without any more further ado here, let's go ahead and look at some of these exercises and kind of explain what's going on as we're going through them and give them a try, see if they help, provide some relief, and that might be the direction that you need to help move yourself for your IT band syndrome. Let's get into these exercises. All right, so our first exercise here is actually gonna be a progression, and it might take you some time to build this progression depending on the severity of your low back. So the very first thing we wanna do is restore extension in that lumbar spine. In this position, I'm laying relaxed and just allowing my body to settle into extension. What we would do is spend about two to five minutes or even up to 10 minutes most to let our body settle in and relax in each of these positions. Once we get comfortable in one, then we're gonna to start to progress to the next, which is a gradual progression of increasing the extension of the spine. So once I'm comfortable laying flat, I tuck my chin and put my chin on the floor to the mat. Then I'm going to add one fist, then we'll progress it up to two fists. And likewise, we're gonna to continue to add height to the, the position overall as we're in it. That is the important thing to understand that this is a gradual progression. So you might have to see where your body is comfortable setting, settling into and build that extension little by little back into your spine. Again, the idea here is that we're helping the disc centrate back up so that if there is a bulge there that this would help restore the bulge to what would be more normalized in the spine overall. And the way we wanna do that is through extension of the spine. Flexion itself can actually make the situation a little bit more challenging. So if you find that your IT band syndrome seems to tighten up a little bit more after flexion type shapes of your spine or rounding forward, then that might be a really good clue that this is exactly what we're needing to do and that things are quite um, needing some attention and awareness when you are in a spinal position that might try and compromise inflection um, and overall stability of the core might be a beneficial thing for you to continue to work on from there. The second exercise is an Eldoa exercise. So we're gonna put our hip against the wall, roll into our back here, and we're going to place our legs straight up along the wall. You'll see that I'm pigeon toeing some and dorsiflexing my ankle at the same time. I want to be pulling my butt to the corner of the room, my tailbone to the corner of the room. So it should feel like I'm almost dragging my heels down the wall as I pull my tailbone to the corner of the room. I'm gonna go ahead and reach my arm so that my knuckles are reaching back for my forearm and I'm reaching the thumbs to the floor. I wanna try and keep my elbows rotated in some as I reach up overhead here. And we're just gonna hold this position again for about a two minute period, five minute period as we work in here. You can reset the arms as you need to. You can kind of adjust the position in as you need to, but here we are specifically letting this settle in to help with any disc bulge at the L5-S1 range. So that is important to understand. This one is a little bit more specific to that lower spinal column.
and our final exercise this is very important you're going to want to do this with the side that is experiencing your it band syndrome away from the pole or the wall whatever you're using here okay so the side that is experiencing it is away from the wall what we do is place one hand up overhead here reaching the palm toward ourselves, extending the arm keeping the shoulder down and back I'm about a foot or two away from the post and I'm going to reach my hip to the pole or for the wall, whatever you're using, and then pull back to a neutral spine, standing back up tall. And I just wanna complete about 20 reps here, nice, slow, controlled, taking my time. And I'm only gonna do it on the one side, wherever it is not symptomatic toward the pole. All right, and there you have it. Maybe this just kind of blew your mind a little bit today, but the underlying issue that could be driving your IT band syndrome that nothing else has been able to resolve or provide any relief to, and it is the nerve blockage at that L4, L5 range, L5, S1 range. Again, if those nerves are, if there's a herniated disc there causing impingement or any form of blockage at that range it can cause that neurological tension through those muscles and create a system that is not willing to let go so address the root that lumbar spine and you should start to see relief in something that you haven't been able to find up to this point if you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend, especially if you know they've been struggling with IT band syndrome and they've been trying to resolve it for quite some time now. Check out the other video I've done on IT band syndrome. Make sure you got those bases checked and covered first. And then if it's still giving you trouble, this would be kind of the one thing that I would say fall back on, look toward a little bit deeper and really check into. If you are somebody who wants direct guidance in resolving your IT band syndrome, maybe you know you have a lower back history or any other form of injury history that you wanna resolve through mobility training and natural techniques, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description here so that you can fill out the coaching application and schedule your mobility blueprint call. What we'll do is get you on a call, assess your current movement, look at how your body is holding itself, and then be able to develop your specific tailored mobility blueprint from there. With that, we'll explain how coaching works online and make sure that you're clearly understanding the whole process and ready to go and move forward in the right direction. So if that sounds good to you and you want a little extra direct help and guidance, make sure you drop down below right now and click that link to schedule your mobility blueprint call that will get you moving in the right direction. And last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.